The first one is raw string literals. Now, what does that mean? As you can see here, I just created a really, really simple console application. This is the default stuff you get here within Visual Studio 2022, as you can see here, and .NET 7. And now if we run this, well, nothing fancy happens. We just see hello world here. But what if I want to use double quotes here? I'm pretty sure you already know that. We get an error. We have to escape that stuff. Well, this can get on our nerves from time to time, tedious work sometimes, and now we can use a better way. And these are these three double quotes. And with that, now we do not have to escape this quote here. We can run this and or this, uh, these double quotes here, and then this works as well. So these are raw literals. And the great thing also is that we can also use new lines now. Now this is really exciting. Just thinking about JSONs, for instance, or big SQL statements. Now you can just put everything into a new line. Just make sure that these three double quotes are there in a single line and the so the beginning double quotes and the ending double quotes, what does not work is you start with the three double quotes, then hello, and then new line, this does not work. But if you're doing it like that, this does work indeed. And you will now see that we won't see these tabs here in our result. Again, running this and you see nothing preceding hello world here. But if I add tabs now, then we see this result here. So this works just fine. And the great thing also is now this is actually feature number two new lines, not in simple strings like this thing here, but also new lines in string interpolations or string interpolation expressions. Now, what does that mean? Now, let's say we want to use this world term here in a variable, right? So we say world bar world is world like that. And now we want to use this thing here. So now there is the typical string interpolation, right, where we can now say, okay, I want to use the term world here, we use the dollar sign, and we can use the three double quotes here. And we can run this. And now we get our string that was expected. This is already a great and of course, let me add the double quotes here as well. This works also. But what now? One more thing. If we want to use the curly braces here in our expression, we want to actually see them. Well, this works exactly the same as with these uh, raw string literals here. We just add two more curly braces and another dollar sign. And this now means when we use two dollar signs, this means for our interpolation, we need two curly braces, right? So actually, this would then look like that. With that, we also see our term worlds in quotation marks. And, and now if we want to also see the curly braces, we just have to add another one. You don't have to escape anything. And now we can do it like that. We see this just works. And this is great. But now with the new lines, what we can also do is we can do something like that. So let's say it is a string. I know that. But let's say we want to use any function here, lambda expressions, link whatsoever, then we can also do it like that. We can just write world and then to string. And even better is that we can actually use pattern matching expressions. Now, what is that? If you don't know it, let me show you one example. Let's say we have our variable world here, and this is not a string now, this is an integer. And depending on the integer value, we now want to display another string. So for that, let's do the following. We use the same syntax, but now we say hello. And now, again, quotation marks work here. That's no problem at all. But now what I want to do is I want to use a switch. And for that, we say world switch. And then in a new line, we can actually get the values. Let me just remove the dollar sign here. Though. So this works now with one curly brace, as you can see here. And uh, this is actually the one for our string interpolation expression. And this is now the switch block here, the curly brace for this new scope. And let's say if the result of world is one, then we want to use the term world 
Now two would be galaxy for instance, and three would be universe. And our default one then is an underscore. So what now, all right? So this is how you could do that now. If you wanna do it like that, I leave this up to you, all right? Because, well, sometimes it makes more sense to use a function, for instance, or variable, so it is just more readable and more maintainable, maybe. So now let's say we run this, and we see the world here, and we have to put this quotation mark and the exclamation mark here, and then it's, this looks like that, and now with the value, let me, let me just close this first, the value two, we get galaxy, value three then would be universe, and value four, for instance, gives us what now, all right? So this is, I really think this is great because in particular with SQL statements and JSONs, you can do lots and lots of stuff there that is definitely more readable when you put a SQL statement, for instance, into a variable, then you can format this thing now and you do not have one single line for a really big statement. So this is something you might see sometimes in a professional environment. So now this is way better. And now the last feature I wanna show you, there are more, of course, if you wanna see me showing you the other new features of C Sharp 11, please write it down in the comments, but these are the three that are best in my opinion. And for that, we need a new class actually. So let me create just one little tiny thing here. So add a new class and this shall be a turtle. And this turtle only gets one property. And this is a string of or string called name. And now you already see something that I want to point out here. This name thing here, this property gets this warning. You see the green lines here and it says this is a non nullable property. This must contain a non null value when exiting constructor, consider declaring the property as nullable. Well, this now means that we say this is a string that is actually not nullable, although it can still be null. And with that, we get this warning. So maybe if we use this now, in, in our code, let's say we've got uh, something like a new turtle. This is just a new turtle, right? And now we want to display the name of this turtle, console right line. And here we just say, what's up? And then string interpolation again turtle. Okay, something like that. Really, really simple. Again, we could do this now with uh, the new syntax and put this into a new line and so on. I think you get the idea by now. And when we just run this, we get something like that. What's up? And then a comma and this looks ugly, right? So what are the, the, the possible fixes here? We could say to get rid of the warning, okay, this thing is nullable. Doesn't change anything. The result is still the same. Or we could say, that this is by default an empty string. But again, the result is exactly the same. We would see every time what's up and well, then nothing, right? And now there is this new required keyword so you can declare required members. And with that now, I can say this definitely has to be set, can it be null? So when you declare a new turtle, you actually see an error and I cannot build this. And this is what I really, really love because now I can make sure that whoever wants to use the turtle here has to enter a new name. So what we can do now is we use the object initializer and we say the name is Leonardo, for instance, we run this thing and there it is, what's up, Leonardo.